Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a woodland scene that has heather on the ground, really some vibrant colours coming through this time. As usual for my tutorials, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad Pro. You can use other kinds of iPads or other tablets too. You can pretty much equate this to whatever app or technology you're using as well. But if you are using Procreate, then the canvas that I'm using is an A4 canvas. And in terms of the colours I'm going to use, well, I've already got some colours pre-selected. If you want to use these exact same colours, then if you look down in the description of this video, there is a link to my Patreon page and you can go and download the colour swatch, the colour file for free. And if you have any problem downloading that file, then I'm going to provide the hexadecimal codes down in the description and on the link destination. And all you have to do is go to the value section, type them in here, press enter, the colour will appear up here and you just drag it into the colour swatch area and create your own colour palette. In terms of the brushes I'm going to be using, I'm going to use two different kinds of brush. So the first one within the airbrushing, I'm going to use the soft brush. And the second one within the artistic section, I'm going to use this leather wood texture brush. Okay, for the first layer, I'm going to go to this first colour. I'm going to drag it from the corner into the anywhere on the screen and just flood and fill the whole of that layer with a background colour. Now this is going to be the lightest colour in our scene, so it's not going to be white anywhere, but this is the, the closest to white that we're actually going to have visible. I'm going to keep everything on separate layers, it's just a bit easier to organise and if you need to change anything as you go along, then you can go back to the specific layer, and they're all numbered on my tutorial anyway, so we're on layer 2 now that I've just created, and I can tell you where to go back and adjust things if it's necessary. Now I have a certain idea how to proceed with this type of tutorial, but just occasionally I'll need to backwards step and through my layers and ask you to do something different because I've decided that I'm not happy with something. So on this second layer, I'm going to go to the second colour. So as you can see here, it's quite a bit darker, but we're not going to use that texture brush. We're going to go back to our airbrushing section and we're going to select the soft brush. I'm going to put the brush at about 4% and the opacity it's about 10% and I'm going to just decide where my horizon line is going to be. Now even though I've told you what opacity to use, the pressure that you apply with the Apple Pencil will make the biggest difference. So if I press lightly or if I press harder, there is a difference in the value. Either way, I would suggest you press on a little bit and just create something of a horizon line. Now it doesn't need to be straight, although if you want it to be straight, all you need to do is press and hold at the end of your line and it will snap to a straight line. So now we've created our horizon line. I'm just going to turn the size of the brush up to about 6% and I'm just going to start to bring this tone gradually higher up and we can also go over it and smooth it in so it fades up a little bit as well. So we definitely want more of this texture or this colour rather to concentrate around the horizon line but then we're having it getting lighter and more diffused the higher we go. I mean, sometimes when I start to like a cloud texture or the sky, then I do something quite similar as well. This is not going to be sky as such, it's a very atmospheric scene. So really this is distant trees, distant woodland, but it almost has the effect of something like a cloud structure as well. So I'm keeping it quite rough and quite textured, it doesn't really matter for this, because what I'm going to do next is go to my Gaussian Blur, and just slide it along maybe to about 10-11%, something like that. I can go back to my brush, turn the size of the brush back down to about 3%, and I just want to begin getting a little bit more precise with the top of the canopy. Now I'm only applying light gestures here, so I'm not pressing on too much. I'm just creating some sense that there's something else at the top of these areas. So maybe some slightly broken texture, top of the trees. We're gonna have branches, we're gonna have clumps of leaves. And it's just noise really at this point, so it doesn't look too dead, too flat in the background. We're gonna cover large parts of this up anyway, so you're not really gonna notice it too much, but it's still gonna have a subtle impact and your eye will register that there's, there's something else going off in the background a little bit more. So I'm bringing it up at either side a little bit and what I'm just going to do is put it at about 6% again. I'm going to turn the opacity up to about 30% and on our horizon line I'm just going to bring it back here. So I pressed on quite hard for that initial line and now I'm just going to lightly blend that in. So you've got a really a kind of change in tone, a gradient from the darkest version of that colour and then it gets gradually lighter as it goes up. I'm going to create another layer, I'm going to go back to my colours, I'm going to go to my third colour along, if I go on the colour disc you can see the blue that it's within, I mean if I just show you the different colours, they're all pretty much within the same blue in fact, they're just moving to different areas of tone. So you can see the actual type of blue doesn't shift as we move around particularly, but we've got a really light version 
a lighter version, but still quite saturated. And here we're moving down more into the gray kind of version of that color and a little bit darker. So we'll stay with the soft airbrush, but we are gonna turn the size down to about 2%. And I'm gonna move over to this part of our scene and I'm just gonna start creating some broken textures. So I think it might be as well to turn the opacity down for this in fact. So we'll turn it down to about 15%. And we'll start to build it up gradually, really. So we can have some little tufts, some little things that stick up. I'm creating the top surface there. So this is going to be kind of in the distance. So you're not going to focus on it too much. So you won't see the details in clarity because it's quite a misty scene. I'm not really happy with the placement of that and that's easy to fix. So I'm just going to move it up slightly so that it's contained within that color area. So we've got a little bit of the blue peeking out the bottom, so it's, it's going to mix a bit better with it. And we'll have it fading off at this size, or rather at this side. So we can have it fading in here, so it's perhaps it's having more atmospheric conditions, just making this fade off at this end. And then as it comes over here, it gets a little bit sharper. It gets a, a more dense version of that colour. Maybe turn the size of the brush up a little bit. We can probably afford to turn the opacity up to about 20% as well. I don't really care what's in this lower section because I'm planning to do some more areas that are closer to and I'm going to overlap on this area here anyway. So it's really just this kind of area that I'm, I'm mainly focused and the top edge. So as long as it's not too flat, as long as it looks like there could be just some textures here. So move it down to the 2% on the size of the brush just to create some more broken texture at the top and then back up to around 6% and we can just blend it in a little bit more here as well. Something like that. We're gonna create yet another layer. Back to our colors. We've got two types of, of color here. Now you can see it's moving along, so it's going more into the deep kind of blue. And then we've got a color here that's really firmly in the orange area. So we're gonna use a combination of those two colors. So I'm going to start with this darker blue color. And I'm just going to, if you notice, I'm still on the, well, I'm on 5% for that. And I'm gonna leave it probably quite low on the opacity to around 10%. I'm just bringing some of that color in. Now, although if we just double check, the color Color is firmly within the blue section because it's much more in the grayed out version of it somehow it appears warmer next to those blues it isn't going to be quite warm enough though so we're going to use it for the base color but then we're just going to use a little bit of the highlights of this warmer color just to really exaggerate what we've got in terms of warmth Okay, so we've got that colour down and we're going to move to this second colour now and we can use this in combination with that first colour just to really exaggerate that warmth a little bit more. So I'm going to turn the size of the brush down to around 3% and the top edge of where we had that tone, I'm just going to really use that colour to blend it in. Perhaps we'll turn it back up again actually. Turn the opacity down to about 5% and turn the size of the brush up to about 4%. And I can really start to blend it in a little bit better now. Something like that. Now this bottom section you're not going to see because there's going to be more ground areas that are going to cover that up. Really what I'm interested in, just this section of it that's going to show. Okay, on this next layer, we're going to start creating some trees. Now we've got various different colors along here that I will come back to, but to begin with, I'm going to start moving to this second section of colors. I'm going to go to the first color. I'm going to turn the opacity up to 100%, which is going to seem really extreme to begin with, but then what I can do is I can start to turn the opacity of the layer down so that it works better. I'm going to stick on the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to turn the size of the brush to about 2%. Tree is going to belong somewhere on the horizon line. So it's going to be slightly bigger at the trunk and we can just blend it in there a little bit maybe turn the size of the brush down to the lower part of two percent and it might be that the tree branches off into two so again slightly thicker at the trunk but not too much it's a fairly consistent form actually this type of tree and we're going to just have it having a, another tree nearby perhaps another couple of trees over here keep these ones separate another one in this region and then maybe another tree that splits off in two again on the from this side. So maybe a thicker trunk and then a thinner one that grows from it as well. Maybe we could just add another one here as well. 
Okay, so they're going to be our distant trees. So in order to make them look more distant, I'm going to go to the section here. If you click on the N, it gives you the opacity and you can just reduce the opacity of those trees until such a point that they really start to feel like they are in the distance. So I'm turning it down to around 50%. If later on you feel that the translucency is creating a problem, then we can always address that. We can always fix it. But for now, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with the way that that looks. Before I create another layer, I'm going to switch to my different brush. So I'm using the artistic one that leather wood I'm going to put the size of the brush at around 4% I'm going to stick with the 100% opacity and I'm going to start using this effect now in fact I might pick a different tree I want this to look even more distant than that so I might choose some trees over on this side and I'm pressing lightly in some areas if I press lightly with this texture I get smaller versions if I press harder I get bigger versions so use your pencil pressure to create different types of effects. Somewhere in the middle is probably best for most of this. I'm not doing any other branches just yet, I'm just creating some foliage. So I'm generally imagining the direction of the branch and then I'm using my brush strokes in that general direction as well. So there might be some that are pointing more down, some that are pointing up, but they're all moving in a certain direction. And I might decide that some of them are going to move in this direction. I'll do something similar. I'm going to just make the foliage at the top of the, the tree area a bit denser, so it's shutting out more of the light. So maybe in this corner, we're really not letting much light through there at all. I might go back to my airbrush, soft brush. I might just add a, another tree there, in fact. I'm going to do a lighter tree. I feel like I pressed on more with that one, made it more of a foreground tree. So this one's going to be slightly more distant. And I'm going to go back to my artistic brush and the leatherwood and start to add some of the texture onto this tree. Okay, for that whole layer, I'm just going to reduce it even further. I still feel that it's a bit too prominent, so I'm going to reduce it down to about 40%-ish. And I feel a bit happier with the way that that's made it more subdued. I can always alter some details on it to make some things stand out more than others, but I feel a little bit happier with the way that that's interacting with everything else. I'm going to create another layer at this point, move along to my colours. I'm going to go back to the top colours and I've got a colour here. So it's after that warm sandy colour. It's the third from the right. And if you look at the colour wheel, it's a real kind of bluey green colour, but it's a very darkened version of that. And it's also within a kind of grey area too. I'm going to go back to my airbrush and soft brush. I'm going to turn it right down to about 2%. And where we have the bottom of our trees, we're going to start adding some texture. So we're going to turn the opacity down this as well because it could easily just be too strong so we'll turn it down to about 10%. You'll notice often I use quite vibrant colours but I turn the opacity down on them and that just seems to work better for me sometimes. So I'm doing some broken texture here. Now you could use the leather wood brush for some textures like this too but I do find it quite sharp in terms of its edges and I want this texture to be a little less noticeable and a bit more blended in. So I'm choosing to do it more manually with the soft brush. So just make it slightly less focused. It's not got a strong contrast between the background and itself. It's more fading in and out. So I don't want to use something that's so sharp edged, otherwise it's just really it's going to feel like it attracts too much attention. So I want it to be more of a subtle effect. I might turn the brush up a little bit in places to like 3% and start to blend this color down. I'm going to bring this across as well. I think I might turn the size of the brush up and just really start to bring this colour down. In fact, I'm going to turn the opacity up to about 20% and then start to bring this down a little bit further. So I'm going to just bring this across. In fact, what I could do, really whack up the colour, start to shut down some of the, the light in this area because it is distracting. I often find it's very useful just to get rid of large light areas because it doesn't doesn't help you in terms of understanding what's going on here to have such a, a large light area it distracts so we'll get rid of that shut out all the light it's going to be darker down in this section anyway so it's a really useful thing to just start to head towards that type of color so we'll turn the size of the brush down again to around two percent and then we can also turn the opacity down i initially had it at ten percent didn't i so it is a bit time consuming this 
texture building, but you're better if you do it more gradually. So we want to get rid of this pale area. We're building up almost into this area really, so it's not gonna go all, all the way to the top, but it's definitely encroaching on this area, on this side anyway. Turn the size and the opacity up just to blend that in a little bit. If you feel like it goes too dark and too rich, then we can always paint over it with some other effects to, to soften the impact of that. Let's turn the size of the brush down to 3% and down to 20%. And we can start to just add some, in fact, I'm gonna turn the size of the brush really down to the top end of 1%. Add some little focus detailed sections of texture, some branches, some leaves that stick up perhaps. Maybe that's too sharp. We'll get more into the 2% perhaps. Now, because we've got such a light area in the background, it's it's really, it feels too much really, that difference. So what I'm going to do in a minute is go back to the lower layers and just start to bring some of those colors back down into this bit. Right, we'll do that first, then it'll help with that area. So we had an area here, layer four, where we had those warmer tones. So we'll go back to those warmer tones and I'm going to go on that orangey colour, turn the size of the brush up to about 4% and we can just start to fill in some of that colour in here. I'm going to bring it across a little bit more as well, so you can see it in this area. But I'm also going to go back a colour to this colour, turn the size of the brush up a little bit more and just start to mix that in as well because it feels like it's the mixture of the two that really works best for that background area. Okay, so now we can go back to our top layer, back to the colours that we were using. So it was this colour initially. Turn the size of the brush down again to 2%-ish, and we're just creating some broken texture that blends into this warmer section again. So maybe it doesn't need to be too sharp. We can always go back at the end, if it's necessary, and just add one or two really sharp little details. So we're going to keep it quite vague initially, just very suggestive, quite impressionistic. Something like that. So I'm gonna go back to my tree colors, in fact. I'm going to use another layer. I'm using different layers for this. It really is better if you want to adjust things. So on layer seven now, we're on the second tree color and I'm still on the soft brush. I'm gonna put the opacity, to, oh, the, sorry, the size at 2% and the opacity at about 25%. And I'm noticing some trees that just naturally feel like they need to be a little bit closer. So I'm gonna use this slightly darker tone to go over the trees that are naturally a bit bigger anyway, and just make them really stand out more prominently in the scene. So now it feels more like this tree is in line with this type of feature. So it's no longer a distant, it's not gonna be in that area, it's more connected to this near aspect of the landscape. Having said that, I'm gonna use it very lightly just to start to add a little bit of texture and tone into some of these more distant ones as well. I'm gonna pick another tree. I'm gonna make that one a foreground tree as well. So which one shall I do? Well, I'm gonna choose this one. Again, turn the opacity up, put it about 25%. Go over this trunk, brings it forward, more in line with this one. We're already starting to create different layers, different depths within the scene. Maybe this one too, but maybe not as much. You can press on slightly less with one of these and you're gonna create a different effect as well. I don't really wanna clutter it up. I don't wanna to do too many different types of trees. So I'm not adding more trees at this point. I'm just changing the, the, the sense of distance, that's all. So what I could also do, perhaps, if I turn the opacity way down again to around 10%, is just start to work at the base of these trees, almost to create some disruption, some texture, points at which they make contact with the ground. It might be that they're casting a slight shadow, but it's more likely there's gonna be breaks in texture where the, the trunk hits the ground and it just creates an opportunity for some slightly darker tones and textures there. I'm gonna go over this distant tree a little bit more. In fact, I might give it another tree to sit next to it or another trunk, but it goes off screen a little bit, something like that. Okay, I'm going to create another layer. I'm gonna to go to my colors and I'm gonna to go to these foreground colors now at this point. I'm gonna to go to my darkest color and I'm gonna use the soft brush still. I'm gonna put it at around 10%. I'm gonna keep it relatively low, but maybe just a little bit higher at 20%. And I'm just gonna start feeding that dark color in at the bottom and building it up. So I'm starting darkest here at the bottom of the scene and I don't really need to blend it in because I'm gonna use the Gaussian blur to really blend the two. But I'm just starting to create a sense that this darker tone is building up really in the foreground. 
Okay, I'm putting the brush at around 6% and the opacity a bit further down into about the 15% now. And I'm just going to just a bit more carefully start to add some textures in here, create some different levels. We're going to go to the Gaussian blur, blur it in a bit anyway, and then I can go back and forth between the brush and the Gaussian blur. So again, I'm still on the soft brush. So I'm going to start adding some textures in here again, some different layers. So really darkening all this area up really. Okay, we're gonna create another layer. We're gonna to along to our colors down here. So I'm gonna to go to this first color, which is part of the pinks and purples, but it's a slightly more subdued version. We'll go to our artistic brushes, to the leatherwood. We're gonna turn the size of our brush down to about 4% and the opacity at about 40%. Let's just test that, that'll do. So what I really want you to do is to just lightly, right, it is important that you press lightly for this. You start pressing too much, it's easy to overdo it. So we're just gonna lightly start to build up some textures. Now I suggest you do this carefully, do this gradually. It's quite really good at creating broken abstract textures for you anyway. I'll zoom in a little bit, but you can start to see hopefully that it's creating a really nice heather-like texture. Now, if you want something more vibrant, let's let's mix the two different things together. So we've got a range of colors. So if we need to subdue it in the distant areas, that's fine, but we've got something quite foreground. So now we've got a base of a subtle color. We can go to one of these two colors. So we'll go to that purple first actually, and we'll just start to build in some of that. Now, this again is the darker version of the vibrant colours. But then we can go to a lighter version too, or even that third lightest version, and really bring out some highlights in areas too. Now it's important not to just colour all of it over by pressing on too hard. You press lightly, it's going to keep it more broken. You want that real dark black areas to come through as well. It's going to help maintain that sense of texture. And what we really want to achieve is clumps, the top edge of clumps, and that's gonna be our heather formations. So there's effectively one clump. It may well connect, because heather does, it, you know, it spreads, but you may get distinct clumps too. So I'm just gonna alternate between those colors. So I'm gonna go to this color here, go for a slightly more vibrant color, a slightly more reddy pink. I would avoid trying to do curved textures like this. I think Heather tends to go straight up in strands and then maybe at the end of those shapes, we're gonna have like the little bits of color. So maybe just keep it like a downward brush stroke. I'm really barely, barely kind of grazing the screen with this brush stroke. So we can alternate again. So I'm gonna go for this lighter color again. It's really good for in the mixture, once you've got a base color down, just to use that lighter tone to start picking out the top edge. So I'm using some gestures going up, some gestures going down. But it's really important that you maintain some gaps in the heather too. So again, I'm gonna to switch to my colors. I'm gonna try for this really dark color here, actually. I think it'd be a nice base color. So maybe I've got another clump, another section of heather texture coming in over here. Go back to my lighter color, just, just next to it. Use that to bring out some highlights. So you can just really tap the screen in the general direction that you want it to. If you press on and, and scribble with it, it's just gonna fill it all in. We don't really want that effect. We want more broken texture than that. So at the same time, it is quite a time consuming process, but it's quicker than just using the airbrush if you were trying to make texture. It actually breaks the texture for you really quite nicely. So it's a much quicker effect. Now, if I want to create some more distant features, I can use one of these more subtle colors and create a clump going off in the background, perhaps. I'm just gonna go back to this layer eight that had that dark color on, go back to my airbrush and the soft brush, and I'm just gonna extend the influence of that color because there are some areas that just don't seem dark enough now in places. It's very easy to be a little bit too cautious initially and then realize that actually you do definitely want more of that color. So we're gonna extend the impact of that into these areas. I still think it's better to be too cautious. You can always go back and add more of what it is you need. But as soon as you start having to erase things, I find that it just becomes a bit of a minefield really. So build it up gradually. You'll find it's easier to add. And I think psychologically it's better to think that you're adding to something rather than having to remove mistakes. As soon as you're in the headspace of having to remove things, I think it, 
it puts you in the wrong place. So we'll fill all this area down at the bottom with a real nice dark tone now. That means anything we add is going to look super sharp in contrast, which is perfect. So we'll go back up to our top layer again, go back to our colours that we were using. So this time I can use this more subtle purple and it will stand out better. So I'll go to our artistic brush, to so the leatherwood one again, make sure that the size of the brush is appropriate, so 3 or 4%. And I'm just going to start adding that a bit more subtly in the background. So the opacity is quite high this time, so it's about 40%. But I'm only tapping lightly. I'm going to build in this colour in the distance, maybe a bit lower on the opacity, about 30% would be better actually. So I can add some more of this into this area and it's more visible now. So what I'm doing is I'm doing some areas that are firmly within the dark area and then I'll continue that texture up into the lighter green areas or to blend those two bits together and then that can work really nicely as well. So we have a dark edge where the black colour stops and then we've got that greeny colour next to it. So you can work just to subdue that edge with this texture. Now, I'm not being quite as careful with this texture. When I'm doing it more foreground and doing tiny little gestures, here I'm just being a little bit rougher. I'm doing more side to side textures. I'm more interested in the overall effect of the mound. And the beauty of this brush is it adds some of the texture in there for you anyway. Even when you're doing broader sweeping gestures, it puts the texture there for you. Now, similar to what I was saying before, I don't feel I've got enough of the dark tone in this area. So again, it's a bit of a pain having to go backwards and forwards, but that's the nature of artistic things sometimes you just have to put in the time remember which colors you are using it is useful so we'll go back to that dark color and i want to build that dark color up into this section a little bit more something like that go back to the colors we're using and the brush the artistic leatherwood i'm happy with the brush size and i'm just going to start adding some of this heather up into this section so it's really only going to be the absolute foreground heather that you really need to focus on getting the direction and the detail of the texture correct. So these distant features, as long as you leave gaps and you, you're thinking of them as little hillocks, little small mounds, and they, they have some separation in places, it's a lot easier. You can be quite loose, especially with this brush. Okay, so we're getting more into the foreground area now. So I'm going to turn the size of the brush. Well, it's about 3%, so that's fine. So press lightly. The foreground ones, I'm going to just employ an up and down motion, motion with this. Keep it a lot more broken. You're looking at an individual heather kind of bush. So you'll see the individual ends. That's a will turn it down to about 2%. You see the ends of each of the little growth areas. So each one of these little areas could result in almost like a spike at the end of it, alternate between the colours. We're in more of a foreground area, so we can use some of the vibrant colours here too. So we've got highlights and we've got some stronger, richer versions. So maybe start with a slightly darker version and then we can go over it with the highlight. So again, we're just concentrating around the top edge first, almost creating spikes at the end. So this bit is a bit more time consuming. That middle section there was quite quick, but this is where you want to be spending the time getting the texture right. So move around your canvas, don't get stuck and bogged down in one area. If you find that you, you can't quite see what you're achieving in one area, then move to another area and then come back to it. I do that a lot. I don't, don't tend to stick in one area. I like to keep my eye moving around a picture, looking at the overall effect, step back, come back to an area, revise how you, you, you view it and see whether it's working. You've sometimes come back to it with a better sense of what it needs to be done. As you can see, I'm doing this all in one layer. You don't need to create separate layers for every single aspect of the heather. So we're going to have some real gaps and breaks in the heather now as well. So when we get closer to you, the viewer, you're going to see more distinct shapes and that includes the gaps. The gaps are going to get bigger. Okay, we'll go back to our other colours. We'll pick this lighter colour and we can just start to work into that a little bit. Maybe turn the size of the brush down even more. So top end of 1%, maybe turn the opacity up to around 40%. Use this now to, to really build in some even finer textures within that. So it's worth spending the time on these foreground textures. I'm pressing on them quite a bit harder now. I'm very much employing a kind of pointillism technique where it's just all about dots. But there's a little bit of movement in there too. It's not entirely a dot. It's almost like a firm press and slide with the, the pencil. 
maybe create a nice distinct edge to some of these. Sometimes they blend in, but sometimes they can have a, a really neat edge to them. Okay, I'm going to use this highlight to create a nice edge along here. Use variation of the different colours, remember, don't get bogged down in one type of colour because I think really the realism is going to come from using the different types of purple. So for these more distant features, you don't have to be quite as pointillistic. You can be more scribbly, the actual brush texture will help with that as well. Now, we do have some different colours here at the end, and I think these are going to be really useful. So we'll take this green colour. It's a yellowy orange, actually, but it, because it's in the grey area of it, it appears more green. So we're going to use this sparingly, but it can still have a powerful impact. So we're going to just start to feed some of these colours just to create the sense that there's, there's definitely more than just pinks and purples going on here. Now, if we use it quite sparingly, then it can have a really strong impact. You can overdo it though. So just here and there, just start to add some of that, perhaps into the, the bits where there's some underside of the heather showing or some other plants actually showing through as well. Because the heather will tend to dominate, but just occasionally one or two other things will, will come through. Maybe try this more orangey red version. Again, it's in a greyed out area of it, so it's much more subdued when you're actually using it. It's a very textured piece, this. It's, it's more impressionistic than anything else. Add some more into the middle distance. Go back to our colours. Now we do have some really dark colours here and they can be useful for subtle details in these black areas. Now if I zoom in, you'll be able to see that a little bit more, but it is a real subtle detail. So I'm expecting on camera, you might not see this very clearly at all, but in the black areas, just to stop them being completely dead, you can use these two dark colours. So we've got similar to what we've got there, but a much darker version. So you can just, in the dark areas, just add a hint here and there. There's definitely something else other than just blackness, but you don't want it to be overdone either. So you can, again, you can use it in the direction that the heather is generally going. So it could be bits of the heather in the shaded areas where it hasn't got a little purpley colours on the ends, but there's still something growing there. Okay, I'll come back to the heather. I feel like we're at a stage where we need to start adding more detail. So we're going to create another layer and we're going to add a few more foreground trees. So we've got three different colours here. So this is going to be the main colour of our tree. And then we're going to add some moss and we're going to add some sort of silvery textured bark to it as well. So we're going to start with this colour. We're going to go back to our airbrush, soft brush. We're going to turn the brush down to around 3%. I think the opacity at around 30% will be good. We can build it up and we're going to start adding some trees in here. So I'm going to start in this section. I'm just going to build a nice big tree here and it's it's going to cover a lot of things that we've already done but that isn't a problem i think it adds value to the, the things that are in this distance really it makes it more realistic sometimes when you just cut across it and you're really bold i think it actually makes it look better so i'm just going to reduce that down to two percent just to give a slightly sharper edge to some of these details if you wanted to switch to the medium brush that's immediately below the soft brush that could be useful too So I'm going to add another couple of large tree formations here as well. Maybe turn the size of the brush up and the opacity up actually, just to save time a little bit. Depends on the size of the tree that you want to actually want to paint and add to your scene. Maybe it's got another tree that grows right next to it. And then maybe we can just add another couple into, not quite here, but just a little bit further away. And they can cut up this way and then maybe another one here as well. Okay, so that will do for the tree formations. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to these different colours. I'm going to turn the size of the brush to about 2% and the opacity to about 20%. And I'm going to carefully add moss and highlights to certain sides of the trees. I'm going to use this greeny colour and I'm just going to, I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. I'm just going to add this green colour to the side. Now I'm not going all the way to the edge. I want to preserve a darker edge along the side of the tree here. So I can allow it to get a little bit more broken at the base of the tree, but certainly at the top and on that side, it's going to be pretty consistently that green and I'll do the same on this one. You tend to notice the green more when we get down into this area, when it's got a sharp light contrast behind it, you don't notice some of these subtleties. Okay, 
Then we're going to go to our other colour, this lighter colour. We'll turn the size of the brush down to the lower end of 2% and we're going to turn the opacity down to about 10%. Now these are subtler details, so you don't want to be over the top with this, but we're gonna work from the edge of our tree and we're just gonna add some broken texture in here as well. In fact, I could almost go down to the 1%. Start to gradually brill some texture in. Now I'm moving from left to right direction and I'm adding a little bit of a curve to help describe the shape of the tree trunk as well. Now I'm leaving some deliberate gaps and I'm not extending too far into the area where the green is. If you wanted, you could turn the opacity up to about 20%, probably show up in camera a bit better that way too. Now, again, I'm not taking it all the way to the edge, I'm taking it almost to the edge. And if you feel that you've gone too far, you can always go back over that with a darker colour later anyway. But I, I really want to take it practically to the edge, but retain a little bit of a dark edge there too. So it can creep into the green side, but really it starts to disappear once we get over that to that point. And I'm going to leave some gaps there too, so almost like stripes that go from one side to the other side of the tree. It can have some areas where this colour is all joined together, and then you might have a big gap. And then another area where all this colour is joined together, some areas where it's more broken up. When it gets down to the lower part of the tree, what you'll probably find is that it starts to break up more. So it's not going to be clearer stripes when it gets down to the lower portion of the tree, it's going to break up that texture a bit more, a bit more fragmented. Turn the size of the brush down to the lower part of 1%, really start to sharpen up some of these details. So maybe in this middle section, especially bit that sticks out, the top part of that bit that sticks out is going to catch the light a little bit more, or the middle section of it will certainly. So it's, imagine you were shading a cylinder, if you were shading a cylinder, you might do a dark edge, a dark edge, and in the middle you might get a stripe of light. So think of it in those terms a little bit. So we'll turn the opacity up to about 30%. And I'm just going to add some little highlights in this middle section. Maybe the, the bark is slightly reflective and it's just bouncing back a little bit more light from this middle section here. If you want to really exaggerate some of it, you can turn the opacity way up, it'll help. Likewise, you can turn it down and you can just create a general light sense and then you could always go back into it with a dark colour. So if you wanted to, you can go back to your dark colour, turn the size of the brush down and you can just reclaim some of these stripes with the dark colour too. Because what will tend to happen is some of these dark stripes that, that are on this on the actual tree trunk will extend across from this lighter side into the green area as well. Maybe as it comes down to the, the bottom section, everything gets more broken up. Now, the more I look at this lower section, I feel that these darker tones are not dark enough when compared with the background colour. So I'm gonna to have to go to this darker colour here, which was part of the background, and I'm gonna to have to start using some of this really dark tone just to blend the tree in with the, the actual area that it's growing from as well. Doesn't matter lighter up, or higher up rather, but this lower section is more noticeable, so I need to help blend it into the actual area that it's growing from. So we get some areas where it's not actually stripes, it could just be some blobs. We need to vary up the types of texture that you might appear. So sometimes it's gonna be more fragmented. Sometimes it appears as definite stripes. Keep it a bit more varied. Go back to the lighter colors again. If you feel like you've just created something that's too strong a stripe at the edge, you can just use the lighter colors to break up that edge a little bit more as required. So I'm going to use the same technique, I'm going to apply it to some of the other tree areas to a greater or lesser extent. So it might be that, for example, on one or two of them, I don't have as much of that silvery grey colour and I have it extending down to a certain extent, but then it, it really doesn't go as far. So we don't want all the trees looking exactly the same. I think you get more believability when you add more variety. Now I'm not zooming in, I, I very rarely zoom in for these tutorials. So there's a limit to how much detail I'm actually going to be able to do without zooming in, but that's quite by design. These tutorials could go on for 20 hours or more sometimes on some of my paintings. So I try to keep them as condensed as possible, simplify them a little bit so that you can get the overall effect and then you can work into it to your heart's content for yourself. Now, if you're happy with some of the versions that you come up with, there is a link down in the description for this video for my Instagram and also a Facebook page, Facebook group rather, that you can join and you can share your work 
on the Facebook with all the other members that are there and get feedback and just be part of the community. Otherwise, you can tag me uh, on your image in Instagram and I'll get to see it. Um, and I do eventually get around to commenting or liking everyone's work. It just takes me a little while to catch up sometimes, but I do do get around to all of it eventually. Now on Instagram, it, you have to tag me. If you just mention me in the comments, I cannot notice and it can, it can go by before I've had a chance to really notice it. But if you tag me, it's going to be permanently there and I will definitely get a chance to see it eventually. So again, I'm going to move back to my absolute darkest colour here. And I'm just going to use it to blend in perhaps some of the textures here at the bottom. I want that trunk to look like it belongs to this area. And I might as well just do the same with this one here as well. And to a certain extent these two. And go back to my colours that were here and start to use them again. Again, I'm trying not to zoom in too much. My natural instinct is to want to zoom in and really get bogged down in these types of details, but I do try to resist for these tutorials. So backwards and forwards between the silver and gray, or the silver and green rather. So I add some more of this silver texture, or gray texture, onto this side of the tree trunk. I think what happens in woodlands is that you tend to get more sun in one side of a tree and so you end up with more moss appearing on one side than the other and I think this is why you tend to see a pattern emerge when you actually notice this that they tend to gather moss on one particular side of the tree. Okay um, we're going to create another layer and with this layer I'm going to use the darkest colour in fact no one so I'll use this colour instead we're going to stick with the soft airbrush, but we're going to turn the size of the brush up to the top end of 1%. Keep the opacity at around 50%. And we're just going to start adding one or two branches that may be emerging from our tree trunks. So I'm not going to get bogged down in doing too many of them, but it certainly would look a bit strange if we had no obvious branches in our scene. So you can add as many as you like until it starts to look too busy perhaps. You have to be the judge of that for your own particular tree because they're not going to be identical even if you try to copy them then they're going to end up looking different one way or another anyway. So just the suggestion of one or two branches here and there is enough to really get the point across. You don't have to oversell the concept. I think your imagination can understand that perhaps there's, judging from the ones in the distance, there's actually more branches higher up in the tree. You can then at that point start to add a sense of leaves. Now I'm just doing it in terms of tapping. So I'm not really controlling it too much. I'm letting it kind of bounce on and off the, the glass, keeping the, the moving whilst I'm doing that. And it's just creating a sense of foliage here and or leaves rather here and there. So concentrate it towards the ends of the little branches that you've done. Again, it's, it's more of a texture than a specific realistic detail at this point, but it adds to the realism of the scene without having to be realistic when you zoom in. And that's why we call it impressionistic. It does give the overall impression without having to be made up of super realistic details once you zoom in. So it gives you the effect without the photorealism. So if you keep it nice and loose like this, you're going to create the impression without having to get bogged down in every single leaf. It doesn't need to be realistic to create a realistic impression. The impact it can have is really quite powerful, even though each individual leaf hasn't been laboured over. You don't have to spend a huge amount of time get, getting each leaf shape looking like a realistic leaf at all. The impression is created by loose textures like this sometimes. If you want to increase the size of the brush to more like 2%, you can get some quicker areas done. I suggest keeping it quite small though, because as soon as you move up into a larger amount, it's going to look like big blobs. And you really don't want that. You want them to look quite sharp. So the lower end of 2% or the top end of 1% is probably perfect. If you do any just sections of leaves that don't seem to be attached, maybe just add some thin twigs that seem to just connect them all together. But sometimes you barely notice the twigs and you can easily overdo it. So maybe turn it really low down and faintly just connect the, the branches together, maybe with a lower opacity. Yeah, but sometimes actually by adding the branches, it looks less convincing. 
somehow. I'm going to go back to my grey colour and I'm just going to work some more texture into the base of our trees. Some more broken texture like we did on that side. Okay, I'm going to create another layer and I'm just going to use my highlights colors now just to start to bring things together a little bit. So I'm going to use this particular color to look for areas where I just want to highlight the top edge of some of the mounds. So especially in the distance, I might just want to move along the top edge and bring a particular shape forward a little bit. So I might want to add more texture of something around the base of a tree, for example. Perhaps I want to have it showing something that goes behind the tree more clearly. Now it might be that there are colours that I haven't really used in this tutorial and that's just sometimes the way it goes but it's better to have them and not use them than find that you've got a limited colour palette and you, you really you needed more colours at your disposal. Sometimes you plan out with colours and actually the colours that you've used and the smaller number of colours that you've used mix together and they create the overall effect without you having to use every single colour and that's just the way it works out and that's perfect. So I'm going to go back to my artistic brush. I'd forgotten to switch brush at this point. I was just using the airbrush. Not really so much of a problem, but perhaps the textures are going to be a bit nicer with this leatherwood brush. Add some more broken texture in this area. Start to make some decisions about what's working best. What if there's anything that needs adding? Maybe there's an area here where you want to create more of a top edge to your highlights. So you can do things like that. Again, alternate between your different colours. Sometimes you want a really nice purple colour to mix in there, just to really exaggerate some of those vibrant colours. The more you mix and match those colours, the, the more depth somehow it's going to give your piece, gives it more vibrancy, more realism somehow. Maybe start to pick out some more clumps that you want to bring forward. Keep alternating between the different colours. Now in the furthest distant areas, perhaps we can go back to some of these colours that I had at the top that I didn't use before. I've got some vibrant greens. Maybe I could just use this brush to start to soften in some of these areas here. So we're getting some vibrant greens coming in there. So where perhaps the, the heather stops, you've got some other types of plants that are mixing in with it too. It's too far away to really notice what types of plants they are perhaps, but it'd be useful to just mix the two together anyway. So we're using the leather wood brush texture so it can have some bits that stick up. If it feels like it's getting too strong, then just take it back a notch, reduce the opacity. You can go back through your layers. So if you want to look at some of your layers, see what's working, if you wanted to add more of that color, and it's difficult to keep track sometimes, but I know, for example, on layer six, we use this color. You could, using your leatherwood brush, start to break up that texture perhaps a little bit more. I'd also quite like to go back to some of the distant areas there. Perhaps this time, as we get further away, it might be better to use this soft airbrush. So I can go back to my airbrush, soft brush, pick some of the more distant colors. So I might go for this purple, in fact, actually. So it's still part of the heather, but I'm gonna turn, keep the size of the brush about two, turn it really low to about 10%, and just have some distant heather features that are perhaps going all the way back here. Perhaps turn the size of the brush up a little bit to about two, top end of 2%. Just some, have some subtle hints that the heather in some areas is going a bit further back and creeping around here. Okay, I'm going to leave this particular tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed watching. And if you do follow along and you achieve some success, make sure to share it on social media. Check my other playlists, hit the bell notification button. Otherwise, you might not get notified when I do upload a new video. And I shall catch you back here soon.